Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Following Bishop Francis Perez, I feel tempted to extend the word of welcome. I'm extremely happy and to be privileged to be part of this revitalizing ministry of the Church in India. And I thank all of you for this fruitful and gracious ministry which goes into the deep hearts of our faithful in India so that the most important ministry of the church may continue with vigor and vitality preach gospel. And the Catholic Charismatic Renewal in India and everywhere is seen as a blessing to the Church at large. My dear brother bishops, Bishop Kali Wali and Bishop Francis Kalist, the Episcopal Advisor, and Brother Suri Dong and the team over here, and Brother Jim, and my dear fathers, sisters, and my dear friends. It's a matter of great joy for the Church in India to celebrate with you the fruits of the Spirit, the promptings of the Spirit, that we may continue to do the work of the Holy Spirit in this part of the world. Fifty years, as we call it, golden years, golden jubilee of a movement which proved to be at the side of God and heaven and made enormous spiritual impact on the life of thousands of people in this country and elsewhere. And renewal is a sign of growth. Renewal is a sign of growth. And that is what the prayer we make to the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, renew us, renew the face of the earth, renew our hearts, so that we may be always remain with you. And it is not casual that we are here at this place. And this is of great significance. Saint Francis Xavier, he came to us as a missionary and worked as a missionary here. We have that sanctifying grace with us as he is present here in his lively body without much speaking. And we are also here in a place where a missionary saint moved in as a missionary. Saint Joseph was, as I understand, he also stayed here, worked here, and last time when I came, I celebrated the Holy Mass at the chapel where he used to gather us. And from here, he went to Sri Lanka mostly as a missionary. Saint Francis Xavier came in, Saint Joseph was, went out as a missionary. Come Holy Spirit, rekindle in us and send forth is it not something beautiful? Is it not something providential? And still you are silent. Yes, yes. yes or no? Yes. yes. It's a sign of God, God's plan for us. What He wants us to do as a sign of the golden jubilee. 
be firm as a missionary and go out as a missionary and, and save souls for him. So this is a commitment that we make for the precious name of Jesus and to continue the work of the Holy Spirit. I appreciate the goodwill of the organizers for renewing the church in India through this ministry. Renewal is necessary and most urgent for all the apostles as far as the church is concerned. And this is a ministry in which our whole self is renewed. So that no apostles will be left alone without renewing. This is done by and through the power of the Holy Spirit that we may continue or we must continue to do the prime ministry of the church. Go and preach the gospel. Let me begin with you an incident which struck me very positively as I was about to talk to a young man who came for the wedding. This man, young man, the son of an IAS officer and grandson of an evangelist, I must say. I would like to call him as an evangelist. Most of you may know him. Still, I don't want to mention his name. You have so many gifts, so you can identify which gift you have. <laughs> At the moment, we follow the gift of prudence. <laughs> this young man was studying outside one of the prestigious universities in a particular country and he was doing very well and he was in love with the girl and she was also studying there of course and it was time for him to marry and this lady, this girl and this boy they knew each other for so many years and then the proposal came that they should be married and she wanted to marry him. This boy said to her, See, I'm happy to marry you and I'm happy to accept you as my wife. But there is an important person in my life and he is the most important person in my decision and in my all meanings. Can you accept him with the same spirit of importance. Then she asked naturally, who is that man? He said, Jesus Christ. He is the most important man in my life. If you accept him with the same priority, I'm happy to marry you. Because this lady was from another faith. And she said, uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Of course, that, that works like that, no? You know it better than me. <laughs> I don't need to teach you, but I can share it. <laughs> and uh, next day she said, Yes, I'm ready to accept Jesus Christ as you do. And she has gone for a course, and she became a Catholic, and I blessed the wedding, and uh, Often I ask of him, and then they are doing well, they have a small child, a very happy life. But this is the only one incident I can quote to you of this regard. Jesus Christ is the most important person in my life. If you accept him with the same priority, I am ready to marry you. Come, Holy Spirit, rekindling us. What? The faith in Jesus, 
the faith in the Son of God, keep him as the Son of God, not as a social worker, not as a leader of an NGO, not as someone who cleanses the evil practices of the society at that time, but he is the Son of God. Who do people say that I am? Jeremiah, Elijah, one of the prophets. He did not rebuke them, the disciples, but instead he asked them, Who do you say that I am? And what Peter said for everyone, You are the Son of the Living God. Come, Holy Spirit, rekindle. For what? To proclaim the good news. To be confirmed in the faith proclamation that Jesus is the Son of God, our Savior and Savior of the world. The Catholic charismatic renewal is celebrating a jubilee with the motive of enhancing ways and means to meet this goal. Proclaim the name of Jesus as Son of God. And we are assured that we will be supported always with the power of the Spirit. What a beautiful, what a joyful mission we have. We have this mission in India, for example, to be a missionary. Most of the villages still have to learn who Jesus is. Most of the souls have to learn who Jesus is. Sometimes I feel in Goa or in Kerala or in some other parts of our country we feel that we are a big, big community. If we calculate numerically, we are only 2.3 percentage. If we take 100 people, when we say the percentage, number and things like that, we are still, we are not still convincing. Make it very blunt. If we take 100 people, we are only 2.3. It is more, I think, clear. We are only 2.3. But when you are in Goa or in Kerala, we feel that you are 7. It's a wrong calculation. 2.3. And believe me, more than us, our political administrators and rulers, they know it better than us. That's why we have to meet them again and again and again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The rest, we leave it to the virtue of prudence. We have to convince them. But still they know we are only 2.3 percentage as a population. What I mean to say is not about the number. We all have to understand. I will say starting with me as the president of the Bishops Conference of India and all my brother bishops should understand deeply that we have a small community in India. Father Gino, am I right? Yeah. When Gino says correct, it is correct. <laughs> because he has no other interest. He is not going to become a bishop so that he has no interest. <laughs> what I need to say 
This is not to conquer many more numbers, but to be conscious of our mission. This is what sometimes we are liking. I am speaking to a core group and the members are committed not to any media, not to any political party, but to a person, Jesus Christ our Savior. So I am sharing with you as one among you and one of you so that our strength will not be diminished. We will go ahead with the more power. Do we have an obligation to, I don't say convert, but to communicate the rest of our population of the saving act of Jesus Christ as designed by heaven? Yes. Yes, hundred times yes, but I must say, I must, we must admit, most of our time and most of the ways and means are confined to institutional levels. They are backing us, of course supporting us. But does it happen really? For example, when we start a school, we think this is the best way to evangelize, the best way to communicate who Jesus is. But after the foundation of the school, our university is to build up the school. Of course, we have to fill it up. And then we have four classrooms. Our duty is to enhance it to eight and 10 and 12 and so on. We have to do it. But after completing all the process of securing what is the necessary documentations and so on, approval, of course, you have completed the process of acquiring even the plus two classes. What is next? What is next? Next is to plan for a college. I have colleges, so if any one of you think that the Bishop Cardinal is speaking about somebody else, I am speaking about myself. So my commitment, my interest, my dedication is somehow surrounded by these situations and institutions. We need it. I don't disown it. We need it, provided it serves as a tool for a communication. Even I just put aside the word evangelization now, I say to communicate who is your priority, who is your master. I don't say what is your priority, who is your priority, and what is your attention. Tell everyone that He is the one who guides us. In His name, or in whose name, we are talking. Well, that is for our introspection. I have prepared a note but what came to my mind is a free sharing with you so that our ministry can be more fruitful. Make disciples, baptize, and to teach, and to communicate. These are the objects of our faith life. He summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and heal. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 8, Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, we read another mission account. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, and drive out demons. 
the Ministry of Deliverance, the Ministry of Healing, the Ministry of Cleansing, the Ministry of Involved in Divine Life, and the Ministry of Proclaiming the Gospel. In short, the mission of Jesus and his disciples is the salvation of men in an integral manner. Not an isolated compartmentalized way, but in a total way, the holistic way. Total salvation, complete salvation of the body, mind and soul, and the situation in which man finds himself. A beautiful book, Alone with Alone, in which man finds himself. Not an isolated person, but a person with the person. It is interesting to note that the disciples received the power to witness Jesus Christ and to carry out his mission early after the Pentecostal impartation of the Holy Spirit in the upper room. Before his ascension, Jesus specifically commanded the apostles not to leave the city until they are filled with the power from above. They quote the Acts of the Apostles, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of earth. Jesus is the one who sends, but it is the fire of the Holy Spirit that empowers sent to be active witnesses to the gospel of Christ as designed by God the Father. Jubilee is a beautiful occasion to take stock of what we have and to plan out for the future what we need to do and to evaluate and what would be the outcome of such collaborative ministry in the church. Our prayer continues. Send us forth alone. The Spirit rekindle in us the same strength as in the upper room so that the design of heaven for each one of us will not be considered a failure but as a sign of God's victory over us. A consuming fire, as it is presented in Hebrews chapter 12, 29. God is a consuming fire. And it is not surprising that fire often appears as a symbol of God's presence. We have so many examples the burning bush. Shukina and the glory, and as a girl's vision, and so on. Fire has been many times an instrument of God's judgment and a sign of His power. Come, Holy Spirit, rekindle the fire. Rekindle the fire. A consuming fire. St. Paul was speaking to the Corinthians, reminding them, if you don't, if you are not conscious of what you receive, he is mentioning about the Holy Eucharist. And he's warning of the danger of consuming fire. A consuming fire. 
made a same fire. Strengthen the church in India through your firm and commitment. I can do it, my dear brothers and sisters, and my dear brother bishops. We have so many apostates in the church, and we need them. Am I right? Yes. I think there will be a few, three or four. No? Yes. We need all the apostates. Yes. And we have so many of our sisters working in different apostles. We need them as well. What a wonderful grace they are bringing to the church for their commitment. But I must say, none of us should forget that we are not NGOs. The government and the subsequent authorities may call us NGOs. We had a meeting the other day and uh, the minister, I don't say consciously but casually mentioned that uh, NGOs like church and so on. So when he came back to his seat, I told him, I'm not a member of the NGO, I'm a member of the Catholic Church. To be the answer. We have many problems, we have many social commitment, we have many grassroots level movements, working groups, but we are members of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. There are people in the church like you who should always say we belong to the church. Be it in India, be it in Saudi Arabia, we are the members of the church. Many, as we said, the virtue of prudence may not allow us to stay in different places. I have my priest working in Saudi Arabia. The former one was jailed in two days for celebrating Mass and getting released from the jail. He celebrated a Thanksgiving Mass and then the airport. <laughs> told him you have taken such a risk and he told me my whole life is a risk. <laughs> I have nothing to lose. So he said that thanks to him and came back and he is doing a wonderful ministry in Trivandrum, taking care of the 90, 94 mentally challenged men in the city of Trivandrum, taking care of him and he is, and he is also one of the best charismatic priests we have. Sometimes we can part of the homily of the priest in the church. Slowly it is fading. Because nobody is now seen as enemy or our friends. That is the biggest danger. There are enemies, I must say, in the good sense of the term, for working against the church. There are people who speak against the Holy Father. Is it because that he is changing the doctrines of the church? I don't think so. But he is changing the mindset of many people. I tell you, while traveling in the train, I don't know whether I told you, this is the same story I told you in, in Pune when we met last day. If you, if you think that the bishop is repeating, close your eyes. <laughs> but open your ears. One lady met me in the train, myself and my, my secretary father Anu, we were traveling to Calicut side and a lady with her daughter looking at me a couple of times and then she was talking something to her daughter and finally she came up to me, are you Carlton Clemens? I said yes. And then she said, told her daughter, I told you no, he is Carlton Clemens. So Carlton, can you do a favor for me? A lady asked me in the train, a cardinal, can you do a favor? Without knowing that, I said, please tell, otherwise I cannot say yes or no. And she said, 
when are you going to Rome next time? I said, I'm in February. Okay, could you please tell Pope Francis? I said, please say what you want to say. She said, tell him more than the Christians in India, we the Hindus love him. A lady whom I have never seen, I have never talked, but she has not seen me. She said, I have seen you a couple of times in the newspaper and the television, that's all. And she said, please tell him that more than the Christians in India, the Hindus love him. I said, this I will tell you. And definitely, when I met the Holy Father, I told him I want something to communicate to you. And then I told him, a Hindu lady told me like this. Then he just put his hand on me and said, Will you meet her again? I said, I don't know whether he is questioning me or questioning me, I don't know. I said, I have seen her for the first time and there is no possibility that I will meet her again. And he said, if you meet her, tell him, God loves you and God loves India. And this is what Pope Francis said. He said, even when there are obstacles raised in our subcontinent, the people are open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. See, when some people in the, the political arena say something against Christianity, look at this poor lady from a village background coming and telling me, knowing that I am a cardinal and I will meet the Pope, she said, please tell him that we love him. Is it not the prompting of the Holy Spirit? Yes, yes praise the Lord. I can do praise the Lord.